pip pip tally ho. Welcome to Jules Guides, in which I wander around London and tell you interesting things about uh, various areas. And um, today we're walking through Mayfair. So come along, Simon, let's go. Where are we? This is Claridge's, which is where celebrities usually stay when they come to London. And it was actually opened by a butler in 1855, but it received royal patronage in 1860 when Queen Victoria and her husband Albert were invited to come and have dinner there by uh, Empress Eugenie of France, who was staying there. And uh, I think ever since then, there's been this kind of tradition for royal guests to invite the Queen for dinner here at Claridge's. In the Second World War, uh, there were a lot of royal families in exile from Europe and um, one of them was King Peter of Yugoslavia and so he came here and he, he ended up fathering his son Prince Alexander in room 212 but Winston Churchill who was Prime Minister at the time so he said let's try and make it so it's uh, he's being born on Yugoslavian soil so they took some Yugoslavian soil and they put it underneath the bed where he was being born and then he declared from 212 uh, as a part of Yugoslavia for that day, which was rather yeah. nice. <laughs> then Churchill discovered he hadn't been re-elected after the war. That's thanks for you. After all that hard work, he sorted out the war and everything. And then he discovered that he hadn't been re-elected. And so uh, he came back here to uh, commiserate into a gin and tonic, I think. Oh, careful. Green cross code, man. We need him. I won't be there when you cross the road, so always use the Green Cross Code. And to Which our American <laughs> listeners, the Green Cross Code man is Darth Vader. Dave Prowse. Dave Prowse, yeah, he used to do adverts when we were kids. It's all right. about, you know, look, listen and think That's right. when yes. you're crossing the road. Yes. But um, it's really expensive in here. I remember I did a job in here once where I had to be a tree. That was it with some sort of promotional thing. And uh, they ordered some food for us. And they said, oh, will you get a burger or something? So I ordered a hamburger. <laughs> it was like 25 quid or something. It was amazing. You know what? That's not too bad compared to a lot of gastro pubs around yeah. here these yeah. days. So. This is called Brook Street, by the way. Um, and it's called Brook Street because of the River Tyburn that used to uh, trickle along near here. So I, I dare say maybe this was a tributary of the the river or something. Uh, yeah, Tyburn, as in Tyburn Gallows, up at uh, where they used to hang people. So yeah, here at number 25 is where George Frederick Handel lived for many years. One of our greatest composers, well, he's not one of ours. I mean, he's German, I suppose. We always try and claim other people as our own, don't we? Like, especially sportsmen. From 1685 to 1759, he even composed the famous Handel's Messiah here. You know Handel's Messiah? Oh my goodness, yes. Do you know one? Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh man. The interior of the museum uh, has been preserved as, a, as an 18th century home, like, just as he would have known it. And it's got all these harpsichords and things like that inside there. The authentic creaky staircase. Yeah, like and just downstairs, Jimi Hendrix also lived there and they've recreated the room. So you can go in and you can see uh, Jimi Hendrix's bedroom just as it used to be. And it's, uh, it's amazing that it's Jimi Hendrix and not someone like, I don't know, Vanilla Rice or someone like that. Well, another great musician like That's Vanilla Ice, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but it would, would have made such a lame story if it was like someone like that, you know. Yeah, well, I wouldn't have covered it, <laughs> would I? Yeah. If you want to make some sexy time, Simon, you can buy your kit here in Victoria's Secrets. It's where I generally go to buy my crutchless panties and things like that. This whole area of Mayfair used to just be fields up until the 18th century. And then um, the, uh, the Grosvenor family, I think they inherited or they bought up some, some property and then they started developing all these squares around here like Grosvenor Square and Hanover Square. And, um, and then it became a very aristocratic, affluent area. But of course, by the uh, beginning of the 20th century, all the aristocrats got booted out and then they, they sort of sold all those nice big grand houses off for embassies and offices and Pret-a-Manger. <laughs> this is Savile Row, and I've been here before. It's a Savile Row we in another tell, video. We can tell. <laughs> well, of course, yeah. You know, this is a, this is where James Bond gets his uh, suits and with nail, in fact, uh, and with nail and I. Oh, this is Henry Paul and Co. This is what happened when I went in there a while ago. So I understand this is the place where a tuxedo was invented. Well, yes, the evening suit. 
The Prince of Wales had just bought Sandringham, and the whole idea was to have something that was a little bit less formal. So he came to see Henry Poole, who in theory cut the tails off a white tine tail suit. So hence we ended up making something a little bit similar to this. It was a sort of smoking jacket style. Uh, we did it in a midnight blue satin silk with matching trousers, and that's really how the evening suit began, and it sort of morphed more into the one which you normally get today. How did it get the name Tuxedo, then? Well, Prince of Wales had an American gentleman come to visit, James Potter, and knowing that he was off to see the Prince of Wales, he came in to see Henry Paul. And Henry said, we've only just made him this, so let me make one for you as well. And he liked it so much that when he went back to New York, he happened to be a member of the Tuxedo Club just outside of New York. So they adopted it as their sort of informal attire, and that's how it became known as the tuxedo in the States. I prefer dinner jacket, don't you? What do you call it? An evening suit. An evening suit, oh, very nice. It's a Privy Council uniform that we used to make between about 1846 and 1947. We did quote someone not too long ago uh, for a new one at about 32,000. You know, I've just lost my wallet. So, oh, number 23 over here. Now that's quite interesting, because this used to be Apple Records. And uh, that was the last place where the Beatles ever did a concert. It's just on the roof up there. Yeah, and then all the locals, uh, it was in 1969, and all the locals complained, and uh, police came and shut it down 40 minutes later. This is the Burlington Arcade. In 1819, Lord Cavendish inherited Burlington House, which was next door. I think he was tired of people throwing stuff over the wall into his garden, so he decided to create one of the first covered shopping arcades in the world. And in order to prevent his wife and friends from being molested whilst they're doing their shopping, he decided to hire like a mini police force from his old regiment, which was the 10th Hussars, to sort of turn them into these beadles, which you can still see here now. They constitute more or less the oldest police force in the world. No running, shouting, piddling in the shallow end, or whistling, or opening umbrellas. And the reason for that was a lot of the upstairs rooms here were occupied by prostitutes. If the, they'd whistle, it would alert the pimps down here and the pickpockets to the fact that the beadles were arriving or the, uh, or the police. This whole area's got all these lovely arcades. I actually prefer the Piccadilly Arcade in terms of what they've got for sale. Now, you see, now this sort of stuff, I, I, I actually buy this. I do, in fact, I only, only just bought a new cravat today. So, actually, speaking of cravats, this fellow at the end, that's Bo Brummel. He, he invented the cravat, this guy, yeah. No, look, there he is wearing one. <laughs> he invented the cravat. Apparently, they say that it took him four hours to get dressed in the morning. He also invented um, wearing what we understand as a sort of tight-fitting cut suits and uh, wasn't very fond of cricket. Terrible cricketer. Had a batting average of 13, I understand. Yeah. He played one game in his life. <laughs> it's true. I think, he, I think he played for Hampshire Gentlemen or something. He scored, he scored 13. He preferred being what they call a dandy. This is Old Bond Street where you come if you want to go to Tiffany's or something to buy a wedding ring or... Anyway, my favourite thing down here is the chocolate shop down here. At least my favourite chocolate shop, Charbonnel and Walker. Sometimes you can get free stuff. I'm going to see if I can. It's my mum's favourite chocolate shop, so I, I thought I'd just come and see. Can I try one of those, the Pauline? Uh, yeah. Well, thanks very much. No, really. English chocolates? Yeah. Excellent. No, oh, but why such a um, so foreign thing, name? Charbonnel was from Paris, so that's why. Oh, okay. Uh, she teamed up with Madame Walker, uh, who did intricate uh, jewellery boxes. Oh, nice. And then so that's why our box was there. Talk to me, Harry Winston. Tell, you know, in that um, Diamonds Are a Girl's Best Friend, Rishi, he goes, talk to me, Harry Winston, tell me all about it. I never knew that Harry Winston was actually <laughs> a, a, a jewellery shop. I had no idea. Because I always thought she was talking about Winston Churchill, who is right over there, incidentally. It's quite difficult to uh, to fit in here. You look. Oh, you have to cross your legs. Oh look, Winston's like resting on your shoulder. It's a special relationship yeah. we have. You know. Pint at the punch bowl, I think, Simon. Don't you? I agree, indeed. That sounds good to me. And there it is. It was bought in in 2008. That was the, the pub that was bought by uh, Madonna and Guy Ritchie. Prince William and Harry used to go there, and uh, Leonardo DiCaprio, David Beckham, Robert Downey Jr. 
eventually he sold it. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed my videos, please hit the subscribe button, tell your friends, have a look at my other videos on the Jules Guides channel and indeed on my website, julesguides.com, where you can contact me if you want a private guided tour of London. Um, or you can be my Patreon or even throw me a donation on PayPal, if you like. Sally, hello.